one minute and 12 seconds into the flight of the Challenger to see uh, an explosion take place. At this particular time, uh, we do not have all of the facts and cannot verify the status of the seven members of the, of the crew. Uh, this has been a very successful program in manned space. We've had 56 successful launches of man uh, into space. Uh, this is the first time we've had an accident uh, of this type uh, in flight. The, we assembled a committee on science and technology today, or this afternoon, to inform the members that uh, I intend, to, after NASA appoints a accident review board or some such uh, organization, to review the accident, that we will review the findings of that. We invite the public, employees of the government, the press, or anyone else that might have any information, might be helpful to the committee uh, in making a thorough review of, uh, of this accident to bring forth uh, that information to, uh, to, the co to the committee. And we certainly intend to review it uh, uh, with, with in depth. Um, we are sympathy goes out to the families of these seven uh, brave people. I had the pleasure of being with them over the weekend, uh, and I know of the great warmth that my wife and I have for them and our deep sympathy for, for all of this group. The House of Representatives has passed a resolution expressing uh, our condolences to the families of the crew of the Challenger, and uh, the, uh, that uh, resolution has uh, just been concluded uh, a few minutes ago on the on the House floor. Uh, that's all that I have to say in an opening statement. We're, we're not uh, trying to uh, place blame. Uh, we're not uh, trying, we're trying to search for answers. And we're not trying to jump to conclusions about how and why uh, this accident occurred. Uh, the space program will continue to move forward. We hope we can resolve the issues surrounding this tragic accident and move on uh, with the program. As to the flight schedule and other things at this time, I think it's premature to, uh, to speculate what impact that might have. I would like at this time to call on uh, Mr. Luan from New Mexico, the ranking minority member of the committee for any comments that he may wish to make. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's been a terrible day for, for all of us. Uh, I was watching uh, uh, the monitor at the time uh, of the tragedy. Uh, it happened that Dr. Bill Graham, the acting administrator of NASA, was sitting in my office, uh, and we were both watching it, and we were also pleased that the weather was so nice. Uh, uh, we watched the uh, initial startup. Uh, we watched the roll, and we were commenting on how well the whole mission was going. And then, of course, we saw the ball of fire and that uh, you knew exactly what uh, what happened. At first, we thought that it might be a premature separation of the external uh, tanks or the solid rocket boosters, but uh, uh, when you saw it, you knew exactly what happened. It would be premature for us on this committee to uh, draw any, any conclusions. Uh, we will uh, await the investigation of the team that NASA was set up, as the chairman said, and then we will have our our hearings, and so I join with the chairman in offering my condolences uh, to the uh, families of, of those uh, great American astronauts that were on board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's my understanding that NASA had intended to have a press conference at 3.30. That has been postponed to 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll be happy to try to take any questions that you might know what the nature of this accident review board will be, who will be on it, et cetera? All I know is in the past that the NASA administrator has appointed a review board of, made up of technical people uh, generally within NASA but not associated directly uh, with the program involved. That has uh, taken place uh, uh, when we had the Apollo 204 <laughs> fire uh, and on other programs uh, where, where there's been, uh, been accidents involved. And I assume that NASA will follow in what they have done uh, in the past. It's my understanding that he, that Congressman Nelson, has gone to Florida with the Vice President. 
Oh, excuse me. Oh. Well, that was uh, bad data then. <laughs> Will there be a joint investigation with uh, the Sen any Senate committee, do you think? I, I think we'll probably conduct our own uh, investigation uh, of, of the matter. Are there any initial indicators that you can give us about what area you might be looking at and finding across the net? Well, I'm sure that NASA will investigate everything possible. In the case of the 204, Apollo 204 fire, uh, we still had the evidence on the ground to examine uh, if they can uh, recover uh, parts of, uh, of the spacecraft or other information that would be helpful. Uh, of course, that would uh, uh, be, be very helpful to any investigation. Uh, landing in the sea as it is, I think it would be extremely remote chance that, uh, that they would be able to recover very much, but uh, that will have to be seen in the future, and I think it would be speculative to to try to categorically say anything about that at this particular time. We were told that that what happened at what Senator Glenn said was the high Q point where the stresses would be the greatest. Is there any thought of what might have caused the rupture to the to the tank? Any? Well, I think we ha we need to we need to find out. There's there is discussion as to whether it was a burn through of the solid rocket booster or whether there was a leak in the external tank that caused the explosion and I don't think they have uh, uh, determined those things yet and that will be part of the uh, uh, review. Mr. Chairman, do you want to consider a new orbiter to replace this one immediately in your budget preparations? Well, I think right now the main concern is to try to find out what uh, is happening, what happened and caused this. Certainly it leaves the fleet at three orbiters. Uh, that <coughs> will be inadequate uh, to take care of the needs. And that issue of, a, of another orbiter will certainly have to be assessed uh, when at the appropriate time. Schedules, uh, military, you've got a very, very ambitious schedule for military flights and, and future flights. Do you, do you expect a moratorium on further flights? or? Well, that also would be determined by NASA, but it would be my expectation that they would try to determine before they flew again as to the cause of this. If that can be determined uh, at, a, at an expedited fashion, and everyone is satisfied with that response, uh, then uh, the schedule could, uh, could proceed. Uh, there may have to be some shuffling in the manifest uh, for flights uh, that have a critical uh, time frame with them. What about the civilian in flight plan with a journalist in space, the teacher in space? Is it with the added danger? Well, there may danger not be any volunteers now. Yeah. But, uh, has congressional oversight of NASA been sufficient, um, especially in light of uh, some members of Congress going up in space? Has there been any influence by those members at all on the oversight of NASA? I don't think it's had any impact uh, as far as uh, uh, any negative impact. I think it would have a better impact, and you may talk with Mr. Nelson further about uh, uh, that after he's had, uh, after, after his flight, uh, which he just returned uh, a few weeks ago. But uh, I don't see that having any uh, adverse impact on the ability of the committee to conduct a thorough investigation of, uh, of this accident. It, and it certainly will not have any impact. Mr. Chairman, who will you question in your investigation as you review this? Who will you question in your review of the whole, of the whole I, investigation? Who will you be questioning in your we will, review? We will question the review board and anybody else that has any information that would be helpful to the to the committee, and I'll be glad to have Mr. Nelson. Uh... Can we hear from Mr. Nelson, please? Yes, yeah. please, Bill. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> while Mr. Nelson's coming up, could I just ask, come back to that question about civilians uh, uh, flying on the space shuttle. Do you, what's your opinion? Do you think we should have, uh, should continue to have a, pro a program that would bring uh, civilians, teachers, journalists, others into the program now, or should that be, uh, should that be put off for a while? Well, I think that'll be evaluated in, in light of this and the, and the maturity of the of the program. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for calling the committee together uh, at a time like this and seeking information. Uh, I was to have uh, gone to the Kennedy Space Center uh, at the invitation of the Vice President, but uh, there staff apparently had a mix-up and they decided to go ahead and leave. Uh, so uh, 
the fact is that uh, I will be visiting with the families and we're trying to see if there's another plane that I can get out right away uh, so that I can get on down there uh, to see them. Uh, I would uh, just open it up to your questions. What, is the, what do you suppose will be the impact of this tragedy on the space program in your I think that there will be a delay, but I think that once the reason for this tragedy has now uh, has been brought out by the investigative board, that we will see what the malfunction is and have it corrected. And America's space program, and particularly the space transportation system, will continue uh, as uh, it has been designed. Uh, this system is not without risk. And everyone who climbs on one of those loaded spaceships understands that risk. Uh, the people who design the system understand that risk. And as a result, uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, this great tragedy has occurred, but that is not going to stop the space program, nor should it, nor would the uh, seven crew members who perished today uh, would ever have uh, wanted that to be contemplated. There have been 16 missions scheduled for this year. Do you anticipate that any of them will be either canceled or delayed? Yes, I, I assume that we will see some delay until the investigation board uh, comes forth. Now, the problem is that a lot of the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean right now. And so uh, whether or not they're going to be able to piece together the puzzle, see, the, what was on the monitors at Mission Control was that the functioning of all three engines was nominal. So. Uh, whether or not they've been able to piece together some information, we'll know. It's my understanding that uh, Jess Moore is having a press conference uh, in, uh, at 4 o'clock, so perhaps we'll be able to get that kind of uh, information there. Senator, everybody knows that there is the risk that you just spoke about, excuse me, that the risk that you just spoke about um, in taking a space mission. What part does fear play in your deciding or in someone deciding to go? In my observations over four months of training and then the delays for our own flight, uh, I didn't see the element of fear present in anybody and it certainly wasn't present in me. The, the training, the preparation is so thorough. Uh, you know what to expect. Every element of the six days of flight of our mission had been practiced and repracticed. Uh, we had simulated and re-simulated. We were told what to expect that the simulators could not reproduce. And as a result, uh, you, you uh, come as a member of the crew to expect that everything is going to be nominal. Uh, this certainly uh, was uh, an extraordinary tragedy today. And uh, we're just speculating, thinking about what it could be. This gentleman, Mr. Right. Nelson. That's Mr. Nelson, right yes. can you tell us, um, in view of that, how you feel right now, knowing that but for the grace of God, you sit there. How do you feel right now? Well, I, I am certainly mindful that uh, just exactly what you said is the case. And by that, I'm humbled. Uh, by that, I'm appreciative. By that, one uh, can't help but reflect in those quiet moments. But uh, beyond that, this is part of what you understand is part of the risk that you're taking. <coughs> of course I would go again, even if it were tomorrow. Can yes. you tell us why the uh, Challenger mission does not have uh, an escape mechanism that earlier shuttle launches did have? Well, let me explain that uh, because that is just an elementary point. Uh, Columbia, when it first started off in its first uh, four or five flights, had active an escape mechanism called an ejection seat for both the commander's and the pilot's seat. 
once the space shuttle system became operational and more crew than just two people were being carried, as was the first crew of John Young as commander and Bob Crippen uh, as the pilot, uh, then there's no way to design the space shuttle given all the weight constraints that you could have an ejection seat for each crew member. And that was always accepted, that once the initial test phase of flying was over, uh, that the ejection seats would be deactivated as they were, and then when Columbia was refurbished, as it was over the past two years, that the seats would be taken out. Uh, no other seats were ever planned nor installed for any of the other orbiters. So that, that's why you don't have it. Now, even if there had been ejection seats, from my knowledge of the system and observing today what happened, uh, there would not have been any opportunity for escape uh, by ejecting uh, given the flame that consumed after the initial explosion. May we assume this accident will not give rise to any reconsideration of that policy? Uh, no, because uh, you've got a, a design system that's not designed for that. That lady back there was uh, Right there, you were trying to ask a question yeah, earlier. I, you had said that your training was very thorough. Did your training include any uh, procedures for an emergency, and, and was that something that was included, something you thought about as part of your preparation for the flight? A considerable bit of our training was exactly preparing for and acting in an emergency. Uh, we had all kind of emergency egress training to get out of the orbiter. Uh, both on the pad and in the case of a crash during landing. Uh, obviously, there's no way you can get out of the orbiter during an explosion such as the one that took place. There was yes, sir. suggestion from some members of Congress today that maybe NASA was trying to do too much this year, 15 launches, and that perhaps because of that schedule that safety may have been compromised. Do you, do you want to react to that? No, I don't believe that. But can you tell me why you don't think that? Uh, because the shuttle system is designed for 24 launches uh, within just a few years and we can meet that objective and uh, the fact that we were going to have somewhere between uh, 12 and 14, 15 launches this year uh, is not, not overtaxing the system. I might. Congress ought to look into that aspect though? Perhaps well, I might add that will be one of the things that we'll look at in our review to make sure no safety measures were compromised. Uh, in this, but as Mr. Nelson pointed out, the system is designed for up to 24 launches per year. But we want to make sure that no safety features uh, were compromised. Along here. those lines, have you checked? So, has there been sufficient oversight, Mr. Nelson, um, in up to now, to have to have gauged whether there should have been this many missions? Has Congress played an active enough role to this point? Yes, both uh, Mr. Fuquay, myself, Mr. Lujan, and Mr. Walker have been on top of that. Uh, with our respective uh, uh, subcommittees and uh, we have seen no indication that uh, the system has been overtaxed. And I think when you find out uh, whatever the investigation board brings forth as a reason, I think we'll see that. It's, it's NASA should reevaluate the participation of civilians in uh, space launches? No, I don't. We have an extraordinarily capable system that no one in the world has had to go to and from space. Uh, it will open up new horizons for us of manufacturing in space. It's very possible that wonder drugs will be brought forth as a result of this new manufacturing capability in the weightlessness of space. That was my primary experiment on cancer research, which the researchers are telling me uh, turned out to be very successful. Uh, given that fact, you want to encourage the use of this kind of a system. And once uh, this problem has been found out and corrected, uh, remember we've had uh, problems in the past. Uh, you remember Apollo 13 on the way to the moon blew up en route. Uh, they were able to salvage the spacecraft by using the lunar landing module to propel them back to Earth for a safe reentry and landing. But that didn't stop the moon landing program. So put it into the context uh, of, of past mishaps. Are you afraid with any of the 
crew members? Excuse me? Did you train with any? Oh, indeed. Can you tell uh, us? That's about? why I made my speech on the floor uh, today addressed to the families and the friends of all of these seven who are good personal friends of mine. I, I, I trained uh, with all of them, but in particular, the one that I trained with the most was Krista McAuliffe. How do you see the uh, accident impacting on NASA's budget? I don't know the answer to that. Mr. Nelson, recognizing all the delays that your flight faced, the delays of the last few days, do you think that NASA was under a certain degree of pressure to get the shuttle up in the air? No, sir. NASA does not launch until they feel that everything is right. Every evidence that we had of the launch was that it was nominal. Uh, the SRBs were functioning nominally. Uh, the three main engines were as well. Let me give somebody over here a chance. Congressman. Uh, yes, sir, Steve. Uh, Congressman, there has been uh, questions raised, though, that because of increasing pressures from budget cutbacks, <laughs> that uh, perhaps uh, some corners had been cut. One of your colleagues mentioned that uh, some of the um, uh, rocket boosters might have been refurbished and reused, uh, and that one of these might well, have... Well, uh, they're designed uh, that way, and that's right. the way they're supposed to be. It's a reusable system. The orbiter is reusable. The two solid rocket boosters are reusable. Uh, once they separate and burn out, as in our mission, they float back uh, toward the Atlantic, a chute is deployed that stabilizes them, then a big chute is deployed where they fall softly into the ocean, they float, they are uh, picked up by a special ship, they're brought back, they're refurbished, they're repacked, and they're reused. The only part of the system that is not is the external tank, which burns up on re-entry. Bill, let me, Sir, let, is there me, any? Uh, let me yeah. clear up one point. You say that because of the cutbacks, there may be some cutting of corners. Uh, let me assure you that there was no cutbacks in the NASA budget uh, for this year. As a matter of fact, last year was $7.5 billion, and we ended up at 7.6. So there, as a matter of fact, there was an increase in the, in the budget. I want to follow that up, though. Some of your own colleagues are raising the question that because of the, of, of the budget situation, um, there is pressure on NASA to save money in, in ways that might have caused some sort of uh, cutting of corners. Now, is that something you're going to investigate? Is that something that concerns well, we you will, all? Of course, there should not be any reason for NASA to jeopardize safety. We will certainly try to make sure that that has not happened. Uh, I feel, as has been repeated by my colleagues, that that has not been the case. Uh, we are very careful. If NASA had been under pressure, then they would have launched yesterday when they had bad weather. But they did not. They waited until today. Uh, so I don't think you can say, and even the delays that Mr. Nelson had, that while, there's, while you would like to launch on time, but with seven delays, uh, I don't think you can accuse the agency of, of being reckless about making a launch. And uh, there, there have not been uh, cutbacks in the, in the NASA budget, and we try to make sure, particularly in flight operations, that uh, there's adequate funds for the training uh, also for the maintenance and turnaround of, the, of these space shuttles. Congressman, in the, uh, Congressman Nelson, in the briefings that you had prior to your, uh, your trip, what were some of the technological vulnerabilities that uh, you were told might be attendant on this particular stage of a given launch? Can you give us any insight into what might have happened at this part of a launch? Well, there are literally thousands of things that have to work uh, properly for all of that system to function. For example, I uh, remember our first scrub, December the 19th. Uh, we shut off at T minus 14 seconds, and the automatic sequencer shut down the count because there was a sensor telling us that there was an over revving of a hydraulic pressure unit that would drive the gimbling on one of the solid rocket motors. As it turned out, after the scrub, when they re-ran the system, they found out that it was a faulty sensor, not the hydraulic pressure unit, the HPUs. Had, uh, had we gone, and had it been a malfunctioning APU, it could have been a very bad day. Well, that's why you have 
the redundancies and the checks. Now, as far as ascent, uh, both uh, of the solid rocket motors, those are the two big ones that look like big, big candlesticks that are packed with the solid fuel. They have to light off at precisely the same time or else you could get a cartwheeling effect uh, right at the pad. And then on ascent, uh, if you don't have their performance as is uh, scheduled or if you don't have the performance of all three main engines, you have all kinds of uh, contingencies. One of the contingencies is to come back around and land at the Kennedy Space Center. Another contingency, if you lose one engine, is to go on and land in Dakar, Senegal, or Moron, Spain. Another contingency, if you've got enough energy, is to go once around and come back to Edwards. Uh, but where there is an explosion, such as occurred today, there are no contingencies, and that's part of uh, the risk that is taken. Did anyone discuss with you the problems with no. Uneven fuel burning the seams of the SRBs and how that might lead to weakenings in, in any of the shell casements? I couldn't hear you. Is it possible, did anyone discuss with you any of the dangers attendant upon uneven fuel burning, the seams of the SRBs, that sort of thing that might lead to explosions? No. As uh, our professional NASA crew knows all of the intricacies of, of those as well as the orbiter and the external tank. Uh, but uh, those are items that uh, if they are certified ready to fly, uh, then you assume that they're ready to fly. Now, a gentleman back there asked me, in my personal knowledge, would I know if anybody would have on that crew had had a chance to know uh, that something was wrong? And the answer to that is no. Given the fact that all the systems were functioning nominally, everything would have indicated in the cockpit that uh, it was uh, all a nominal performance, and with an explosion like that, uh, nothing on the controls they might have seen. Nothing we'll, we'll, have we'll have to wait for the investigation, but everything that we know now, no, there isn't. Yeah, who, who yeah, no, a question? Did, okay. they, did they tell you during your training what circumstances might cause such an explosion when everything else seemed to be going normally at that point in the flight? No. Uh, the, the training that we have uh, uh, doesn't didn't go into an explosion like this because this uh, wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, we were trained, for example, suppose that one engine had shut out. Well, depending on where that one of the three engines had shut out after your SRB SEP, uh, it would depend on where you would try to bring it back and land it. We knew that if we lost two engines, for example, anywhere before seven and a half minutes into the flight, we were in the water. And we knew also that the likelihood that had Hoot had to land that orbiter in the ocean, that we would probably not survive the impact into the water. And thus, uh, we had planned all kinds of things. Had that occurred, how he would blow the top hatch just before impact in the case that we did survive such an impact. Those were the kinds of contingencies that you plan something that you can do something about. Uh, they could not do anything about this massive explosion uh, in the uh, sky today. Your training didn't. To Gentleman from Miami Herald. Um, given, given the thoroughness of the training and given the confidence that not only you but I would say the public um, at large had in the system, uh, can you tell us uh, what went through your mind as you were seeing this uh, on the television screen? Could you believe it? Uh, I had all of my staff in the office watching the NASA Select channel uh, as they went through the final countdown. And uh, we were all cheering as the ascent uh, progressed. And then suddenly, uh, as the scene unfolded in front of our eyes, I turned to everybody in the office and said, there's been a major explosion. And then, uh, we started to hear the story thereafter. Might, yes, ma'am. How might the cold have I'll affected? Come to you next. Excuse me. How might the cold in Florida overnight have affected the mission? Unless there were a piece of ice that had formed somewhere on the orbiter or the external tank, or perhaps on the outside of the solid rocket boosters, which had then been jarred loose to puncture a portion of one of three of those systems, 
then I don't think, uh, I know of nothing at this point that the cold weather would have caused, uh, that would have called for that kind of an explosion. Congressman, uh, NASA had asked for five orbiters. Congress gave NASA four. Uh, is this committee going to vote to replace that? Uh, there, there's no way to answer your question at this point. That, that obviously will be part of the discussion in the province of Mr. Fuqua and his committee. Yes, ma'am. affect the militarization of space in the future? I'm sorry, what? How is this going to affect the militarization of space? Well, I don't think it will. I think uh, our defense satellites are still going to be uh, put into orbit, uh, just as uh, commercial satellites for communications are going to be put into orbit, and uh, the space transportation system will be used to do that. But do you have any speculation yes, of what caused this yourself? Looking at these pictures? No, I don't. Yes, sir. You said earlier that you trained extensively with uh, Krista McAuliffe. You got to talk a little louder. I can't. You hear. said earlier that you trained extensively with Krista McAuliffe. Uh, did she at any time mention her fear that something like this might? Not happen? in the least. Uh, Krista was as enthusiastic a participant as anyone can imagine. Uh, she thoroughly enjoyed all of her training with, along with her backup, uh, Barbara, and. Uh, the training speaks for itself. You can see all the footage, and uh, okay. Given the uh, given Steve, the let me give somebody else a chance, and I'll get back to you. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, more than a year passed following the uh, Apollo One flyer before another uh, manned mission went into space. Do you think that it's reasonable to assume that a similar period of time will pass following this accident before the next mission goes up? I think that they will certainly know what caused this accident and as a result of that uh, then be able to plan to correct whatever this malfunction was. Do you think the time frame though will be similar? There's no way that we can answer your question. We have to know what was the cause of the malfunction first. That's going to take some time. Uh, a lot of the evidence, as I said, is in the bottom of the ocean. And uh, as a result, uh, it's going to take some time. But once the uh, cause has been determined, then it'll be corrected, and uh, America's space program, and specifically the space shuttle uh, program, will continue. Is it possible we will never know what caused it? I, there's no way I can answer that. Uh, Bill, given the, uh, uh, the combination of the loss of this very valuable and expensive vehicle, plus the fact that Graham Rudman will mandate cuts in all programs, um, at this point, how uh, would you estimate how seriously has the space pro this manned uh, program been set back? Are we talking about months, years? I mean, what is the combined effect of this loss plus the Graham Rudman on this program? Well, there's no way anyone in this room or anywhere in the city of Washington right now can answer your question. Can, can you even guess it in no, any way? No, I mean, or? why guess? It, it wouldn't be worth uh, the utterance of the sound waves, uh, simply because uh, we've got to know what happened to the system first. Could you describe your thoughts? Yes, sir. You keep talking about a malfunction. In your mind, is it impossible that this could have been somehow sabotaged or some kind of act um, external to the function of the system? And since you warn it, what is the security like for this system? The security at the Cape is elaborate. Uh, we take certain risk in a free and open society because we are such. It is always possible that there could have been some sabotage, but it is, ver it is very unlikely that that was what happened. Congressman Nelson, have we lost our competitive edge in space because of what happened today? No, no. sir. Uh, one of the things that I learned from my experience is the capability of this transportation system the Soviets very much want this capability, and they're building a shuttle, and it looks an awful lot like ours, but they haven't flown it yet. There are major technological breakthroughs with this system that no one in the world has been able to develop, and primarily that is the, the thrust of the engines, the thermal protection system, which is the the silicon tile covering the entire system so you don't burn up on re-entry. And thirdly, the flight control system through the use of computers to get you from a point 
in orbit at 17,500 miles an hour back to a point on the Earth uh, standing still. Now that has not been duplicated and that's why it's very clear that this will not jeopardize uh, our lead in space. It's something that we certainly have to be careful of uh, and constantly monitor, but uh, not at this point. Congressman, another uh, Let budget. me give somebody else uh, a chance. You, you've had two chances. Uh, who has not had a chance to ask a question? I've not asked okay. a question yet. Yes. Like to, in seeing the playback in slow motion, it seemed that as they're going to full throttle, there were some external flames on the tank. Could it have been possible that a trained eye looking at a close-up monitor of the tank prior to giving the order to give full throttle could have prevented this kind of tragedy by noticing some flames? Is that something that's uh, possible? No, I don't know what you're talking about, flames on the tank. You're just talking about just before the explosion? That's, that's right. Well, at, at this point, uh, once you're up there after a minute in flight uh, and you see flames on the tank, if in fact you did, uh, I didn't until I saw the explosion. Uh, but, I mean, there's nothing you can do at that point. Uh, I heard earlier as I walked in, somebody was worrying about the throttling back. That is a normal part of the ascent. You go through the region which is called maximum dynamic pressure, which is about 30 seconds after liftoff. It's called max Q. You throttle your engines back to 65%. That's automatically done by the computer program. Why? Because you're going through for your speed and also the density of the atmosphere, there's the maximum pressure on the vehicle. That's why you automatically throttle back. Once you get through that region, as Challenger did today, then you throttle back up to 104% with your engines as Challenger did today. So it was all a nominal ascent until the explosion. Yes, sir. Can you describe your thoughts and reactions as you realized what the tragedy was? I would reflect purely uh, what I said on the floor, that for all of us to express our, our thoughts and prayers to the families and friends of these seven members of the crew, personal friends of mine, realizing that this is a tragedy that uh, words do not come to describe. And yet, uh, all of them being pioneers, all of the professional astronauts who lay it on the line every time they climb into those orbiters, recognizing that all of them are pioneers. Uh, pioneers have had tragedies before, and tragedies will occur in the future not necessarily with this space transportation system. Hopefully not. But this is the part of venturing into the unknown. And uh, for those of you who did not catch my remarks on the floor, I would purely uh, summarize that by a person who had to deal with tragedy and pressure. Uh, Helen Keller said, that life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Uh, anybody else that hadn't had a chance of asking a question before I start taking some of the ones that already have? All right, yes, sir, and then um, the lady. Congressman, if you could go back a second on your flight to that point when you're roughly seven miles or so downrange, somewhere near when the explosion occurred, what, what's the physical situation that you're in at that time? How many Gs are you pulling? Can you move around? Are you pretty much just watching the computer go through the um, functions? Everyone is strapped in their seat. You are feeling uh, probably in excess of one and a half, perhaps two Gs at that point as you have throttled back up to 104%. Uh, the commander and pilot are constantly surveying their instruments, uh, confirming exactly what is the nominal ascent trajectory. And uh, at that point, uh, you are a little less than a minute away from the SRB separation. Uh, 
there is basically nothing in the way other than that kind of profile that is happening at that particular time. You're, you're not moving, no. The, the commander and the pilot, of course, are, are constantly monitoring, and if they need to flip any switches, as, for example, our pilot, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charlie Bolden, had noticed right after we cleared the tower that there was a helium leak. He was immediately on that. He flipped the switch, then flipped two or three others, and that took care of the problem. But uh, that perhaps is an important point for you all to, to know, that everything is not controlled by the ground, that uh, the people who fly the flying machine are the people who are up there in that front cockpit, sitting in the commander's and the pilot's seat, overlooked by the mission specialist who's sitting between them, overlooking all the array of instruments. And thus, when the helium uh, on our ascent uh, leak occurred, uh, Charlie Bolden was on top of it a minute, had already corrected the problem uh, before the problem was ever called up by mission control uh, from the ground to us. Yes, sir. I'd like to go back to a previous question. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll get back to you next. Um, Congressman Fuqua said earlier that there's discussion about whether there was a burn through of the solid rocket booster. As I understand it, these boosters are retrievable and reusable. If that's the case, could not it be that the case that reused rocket boosters could eventually burn through just through normal wear? No, you're talking about solid rocket boosters that have casings that are that thick of steel. And so we're not talking about any kind of simple burn through. Indeed, we're just going to have to wait for the report to uh, see uh, what in fact caused it. Yes, ma'am. Another budget question. Uh, you're going to be faced with, because of Graham Rudman, questions about the level of funding for the space station, questions about the level of funding for the shuttle program. If somebody suggests, as probably they will, uh, that because of this, maybe this would be an appropriate time to cut back on the funding, would you, as the head of the authorizing committee, uh, fight that? And what would, what would you say in, in response? Well, I will uh, give you an answer to that question once it's in the context of what we know, but I can tell you that uh, if an analogy is appropriate, had I been a member of Congress at the time of the Apollo 13 uh, disaster on the way to the moon, that I would have said uh, what the leadership in Congress exactly said at that time. Let's find the problem, let's correct it, and let's continue on with the program. Uh, our transportation system is so valuable to us as to the future of this country of being able to have access to space and then being able to develop the unique properties of the weightlessness and the vacuum of space and what that's going to mean to this country in the development of technology that if you want to draw an analogy of our economic competition of the future is that that our, our ability to compete in the international arena is going to be by what we produce out of high tech. And so much of our high tech comes out of the research and development of America's space program. Now, whatever is the cause of this tragedy, we need to find it out, but we need to move on. Any further questions? Thank you all and have a good day. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say a word, a collective word on behalf of all of us to state our inexpressible sorrow, not only uh, on behalf of the uh, seven courageous astronauts and their families, but uh, our feeling of uh, identification with the millions and millions of American school children uh, who watch that screen live uh, with joy and excitement, watching their role model, Krista McAuliffe, soar into the heavens, uh, and within seconds uh, to suffer the agony, the trauma, the bewilderment of that awful happening. To me, it's clear that the parents of America, the schools of America, the churches of America, all have a mission of mercy somehow uh, to make this happening understandable by the kids and help kids come to terms with that 
awful, sad, tragic event. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. ABC would like to have you as a guest tonight on the broadcast. If that is okay. possible. Has it, has it been set up with the office? I don't know. I mean, it's set up with our office, but if your office could do it, we'd like to do it. I'm sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just go where my office tells okay. me to go tonight. And if, if they've set that up, then that's fine. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Do you know about now? Are you going to be here for me for the, for the budget? I don't know. Let me find out. Uh, am I going on an Air Force Base? Yeah. Excuse me. What's the deal? I'm not sure we have all the technical capability. Well, if the family's in the area. You want to take that in line with the No, if the families are not going to be there, there's no sense uh, for me to go.